What conservatives claim was happening to them on Twitter is actually happening to the left now that Elon Musk has taken over the company. What I mean by that is censorship and banning of left-wing voices. According to The Intercept, anti-fascists, including organizers and journalists, have had their accounts suspended in the past week as a result of right-wingers petitioning Elon Musk to have their accounts removed. Uh, now, one of them is Andy No. Andy No, as well as uh, other, you know, right-wing activists, as well as trolls, they decided that they were going to go and tell Daddy Musk to ban those accounts for fake TOS violations. Now, what did I tell you before? Far right hates actual journalism. They hate being held accountable. They hate when people post things that they're actually saying. And so, of course, they have to get rid of them. Now, one of the suspended users, users happens to be Chad Loader. Chad Loader is someone who helped identify a masked Proud Boy who attacked police officers during January 6th. So his investigative work actually led to the arrest and conviction of a Proud Boy. Another account that was canceled, and that's what this is. This is, this is cancel culture right here, is video journalist Vishal Pratap Singh, who reports on far-right protests in Southern California. That account has also been suspended. Among other prominent accounts, suspended were the Elm Fork John Brown Gun Club, which is an anti-fascist group that provides armed security for LGBTQ plus events in North Texas, which... Look, uh, from the Club Q shooting, it's obvious that there are uh, places that need this protection against mass shooters. And then you also have Crime Think, which is an anarchist collective that has published and distributed anarchist and anti-authoritarian magazines, books, posters, and podcasts since the mid-1990s. Now, I'm not uh, an anarchist. I don't necessarily agree with the ideology and not like 100%. But do they have the right to be on, uh, you know, these, uh, this website? Of course they do. I mean, they haven't done anything wrong. They broke TOS. They have more than, they, they should be more than uh, able to be on those platforms. And again, I don't even agree with, you know, having uh, these armed uh, groups doing LGBTQ uh, security, right? But nonetheless... I guess apparently there's a need. But still, the reason that these accounts had been singled out is because of criticism from Andy No. Uh, Andy No is someone who has been busted numerous times lying and making things up, making up reports about left wing protests. He's the one who's been spreading the delusional narrative that there is some sort of shadow. Antifa army. Antifa, by the way, short for anti-fascist. We should all be anti-fascist. There shouldn't be pro-fascists in this country. But apparently, um, you can see Andy No seems to be pro-fascist. That said, in a public exchange on Twitter on Friday, Musk invited Andy No to report Antifa accounts that she should be suspended directly to him. And of course, when that happened, that's exactly what happened. Musk suspended them. So now that said, Twitter is Elon Musk's uh, platform. He owns it. He can do whatever the hell he wants. He can suspend whoever. Okay. And I've said that before, by the way. I was, I see, that's something that I'm consistent about. Before the Musk takeover, I was like, yeah, look, if Twitter wants to get rid of you, they can get rid of you. It, it's our platform. They're not beholden to free speech because they're private corporations. Elon Musk, same thing. He can cancel and suspend anyone he wants. The thing about that is you can call him out for hypocrisy, you know, because uh, he claimed free speech, free speech for you, free speech for them, free speech for everyone, uh, except for you and you and you and you. That's how it, 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 it apparently seems to work. Look, it's clear that his vision for free speech on his platform basically only extends to the things that he agrees with, people that he agrees with. Now, it's also important to, to note 
that these journalists and publications did not break the terms of service. The only crime that they had done was be supposedly Antifa or whatever Andy No thinks is Antifa. Real, in reality, this is personal for Andy No. As The Intercept reported last year, No had previously tried and failed to have Loader suspended from Twitter and also joined a botched attempt to have a court order the researcher to stop tweeting about one of the Proud Boys who took part in the Capitol riot. So Andy knows protecting Proud Boys and Capitol rioters. Yeah. So, look, in a phone interview on Monday, Loader, a tech company founder and cybersecurity expert, told The Intercept that their account was initially suspended last week for about 90 minutes after Musk had replied to no on Twitter, showing that he had directly done that. After briefly regaining access to the account, Loader was then suspended again and accused by Twitter of having used an account to evade the ban. Loader said that they do have access to another dormant account, Masks for Docs, which was set up in early 2020 as part of an effort by a group of activists to donate N95 masks to doctors during the first month of the COVID-19 pandemic, but had not used it for ban evasion. However, No had pointed out, hey, look, that's uh, Chad Loader's alt. Go get it, Elon. And that's exactly what happened. He said this, what I believe happened is that I and other accounts have been mass reported for the last few weeks by a dedicated group of far right extremists who want to erase archived evidence of their past misdeeds and to neutralize our ability to expose them in the future. What I suspect happened is that Twitter's automatic systems flagged my account for some reason and no human being is reviewing these. He's too kind. I think he's too kind. Look, uh, Musk, I, I, look, Musk fired all the humans. Most of them, anyway. There's a content moderation team. What content moderation team? There's like one person left. <laughs> but not only that, but there's a list of lefty accounts that are being passed around by right-wing activists as part of a campaign to deplatform those accounts by mass reporting them for fake violations. You know, it's brigading, essentially. And we've seen this happen before. It happens on all these different platforms, it happens on YouTube, it happens on Facebook, it happens uh, on Twitter. But usually, these accounts get reinstated once a human has time to look at them and know that they're mass reports. There's no humans left. And I don't think they're going to get reversed because, once again, this is somebody complaining directly to Elon Musk, who has been responding specifically to right-wing people who have been complaining to him. So, again, Loader, by the way, um, look, as I said, there was these, uh, uh, this list going around. Now, I looked at this list. Loader shared screenshots with The Intercept showing Telegram channels with tens of thousands of followers passing around that list. Now, this includes QAnon adherents and Proud Boys having coordinated a, a, a spate of complaints against Loader's tweets, and once he had been suspended, had celebrated. Their plan had worked. They got him. They got him off the platform. Now, that just right there shows that everything that they claimed the left was doing, because remember, the biggest complaint from right-wingers is, ah, oh, your Twitter is left-wing... They're banning, they're silencing conservative voices, they're censoring us. You know, just for being conservative. Well, what is this then? What is this? No, everything they claim the left was doing, they're doing now. The right is actually doing. Loader says that Musk appears to be reworking content moderation to tilt the playing field in favor of far-right extremists. Twitter, he says, is turning into gab with crypto scams. Yeah, I mean, you look at a lot of the uh, verified accounts and they're all either crypto bo bros or bots. That said, I, I do want to be fair and, and uh, Loader uh, did call out criticism of Twitter pre-Musk takeover because look, 
Twitter had a lot of problems before. Before Musk. Now, the thing is, Elon Musk could have actually came in and fixed a lot of those problems, and Twitter would be great. It would be better than it was before. This was a pretty mismanaged company. Now, let's be honest about that. It's, and it's not because they were filled with left-wing SJW woke moralists. No, that's not why. It's just it was poorly managed. And it didn't make a lot of money. Then Musk came in, and again, he could have done something good with it. Instead, he's making it into basically a right-wing hellscape. Which it was bad before. Now it's worse. And so, look, uh, he said this, by the way, uh, getting back to Chad Loader and one of the issues that was happening pre-Musk. He said, I agree that Twitter shouldn't have censored the Hunter Biden laptop story. We just don't want outright Nazis posting our home addresses. And that, you know what? Is it really that hard? Really? I mean, again, I've criticized Twitter before and I've criticized some of their decisions. Uh, I do think Twitter had potential value in activism and journalism. Quite worked out right, but there was potential there. But now what Elon Musk is doing is basically taking orders from the far right. They don't believe in activism. They don't believe in journalism. What they do want to do is turn it into gab. They want to turn it into another right-wing echo chamber. And it's all because of a man-child, Elon Musk, and his desire to be praised as the savior of mankind and the protector of free speech, which he is neither of those things. Elon Musk is a vulture capitalist. He's somebody who grew up with emerald mine money, and he bought out companies and basically took the credit for other people's success. That's it. He's somebody who, honestly... Probably wakes up and smells his own farts. It's because he's been surrounded by yes men his entire life saying, oh yes, by the way, they smell great. Mm, mm, magnifique. No, this is the guy who's running Twitter. And it's only a matter of time until he runs it into the ground. I mean, either that or he actually hires somebody competent to run the company day by day. And if he was smart, that's exactly what he would do. Hire a CEO, step back, and just, you know, collect the money. Instead, no, he's got to be out there tweeting and supposedly running the company himself. That's why it will fail.